You're listening to Book Insights, brought to you by Memoed. Finding and simplifying the world's most powerful ideas to fit into your lifestyle. Each episode is a deep dive into a nonfiction bestseller that can change your life or make you think. In around 30 minutes, you'll learn all about a book that offers wisdom for your life, career, or business. So get ready to live and work smarter, better, and happier with Book Insights. Bank of America hates Ramit Sethi. Wealth managers hate Ramit Sethi. Financial advisors, cryptocurrency speculators, and portfolio managers all hate Ramit Sethi. Sethi can't stop making enemies in the financial world, and he absolutely loves it. To be fair, Sethi hated them first. From the beginning of his career as a blogger and investor while at Stanford University, Sadie detested the big banks and unscrupulous experts, extortionate and manipulative behavior, opaque practices, and shameless exploitation of customers and clients. No wonder we can't get ahead, right? Wrong. Bottom line, Sadie knows who's truly at fault for all your money troubles. And he knows you know. It's not the boomers and it's not the banks. It's just you. Don't worry, though. The author isn't trying to sell you an app. He doesn't even want you to start budgeting. Sadie hates budgeting. No, he wants you to know that you can beat the system. Sadie wants you to stop living in fear of the collection agency and start spending your money on the things you love. Ramit Sadie wants to teach you to be rich. And he can do it in just six weeks. In I Will Teach You to Be Rich, he does just that thoroughly breaking down step-by-step step how to pay off your credit cards, start investing, and ultimately reclaim financial control. In 2019, he published a second edition, a decade after the original, updated for the next generation of fiscally irresponsible adults who think 401ks are a scam. Sadie's approach to financial advice is pragmatic and often very funny. His writing comes across like a cool mentor or rich young uncle, slightly condescending, zero coddling, yet approaching and charming. He knocks you on the head for being too lazy or afraid to dispute fees and charges, then guides you often word for word on how you can get your money back or how to get that raise. In this book, Insight, we'll break down Ramit Sethi's I Will Teach You to Be Rich into four themes. First, we'll look at the 85% solution and learn what it means to have a conscious spending plan. Second, we'll learn to be aggressive when it comes to personal finances and don't be a financial victim. Third, we'll learn about the power of investing and having a retirement plan. Fourth and finally, we'll discover what it means to live a rich life. Before you go running for the hills, Sethi knows that getting your financial life together is not easy. Taking accountability for yourself is the starting point, but it's certainly true that the big money machine does not make things easy for you. Their systems are set up to be deliberately confusing, to tax your time and patience, and to separate you from your money as often as possible. They want you to give up and be lazy. Changing banks, disputing charges, saving for retirement, investing, why bother? This, right next to hoping you win the lottery, is just about the worst possible attitude you can have when it comes to your finances. So many people today claim financial illiteracy as a defense mechanism. If you don't know more, you can't be called stupid, right? Look at all the books, websites, gurus, and even family members who claim to know all the money secrets. There's no way to absorb it all and become an expert in finance. First of all, Sadie says, it's okay to make mistakes. This finance game is confusing, and it's almost certainly better to make errors now when you're young and have no money. The only real mistake is giving up on your finances until you're a walking regret machine, living paycheck to paycheck at age 65. Yes, it is daunting, but taking that first step is everything. Sadie recommends the 85% solution, by which he means getting started is more important than being an expert. 
He writes, The easiest way to manage your money is to take it one step at a time and not worry about being perfect. I'd rather act and get it 85% right than do nothing. How many of us put 50% or maybe even 0% effort into our finances? More than we'd like to admit. It's easy to get overwhelmed at the thought of managing our money, which usually leads us to doing nothing at all. But never fear. Sadie all but literally holds your hand through the steps you need to take to get out of debt and start saving, wrapping up each chapter with exacting concrete actions for the week. And thankfully, literally none of it is about budgeting, something we all claim to do, but statistically almost no one does. Here is Sadie himself speaking at a Talks at Google event. There's a million things we can do, mm -hmm. and when faced with these choices, we do the same thing we've always done which is nothing. What my approach is, and which is based on psychology, is there is a such thing as analysis paralysis. There is the paradox of choice. So what I tell people is, focus on the four or five big wins. Get a dream job, negotiate your salary. Invest automatically so you don't have to think about it. It's not a decision. It may seem like pure semantics, but instead of budgeting, Sadie recommends a conscious spending plan. In a Marie Kondo kind of way, this is less piecemeal belt tightening and more deciding what matters to you and what doesn't. Cutting back spending in all areas of your life is not realistic. No, Sadie's approach is choosing the things you love enough to spend extravagantly on and then cutting costs mercilessly on the things you don't love. When you start spending consciously, saving becomes easy. All you have to do is look very closely at what's important to you and be brutally honest with yourself. It's less an act of discipline so much as it is choosing what you love over what you can take or leave. Do you love all your streaming services but never watch cable? Keep your apps, kill the cable, save $50 a month. Do you love traveling and don't care about having a big apartment? Cut your rent check in half by renting a smaller room and book that plane ticket to Brazil. Do you love buying beautiful clothes? Okay, what don't you love? Maybe you could take or leave going out to bars. Or you don't care about having nice home furnishings. Choose the thing you love and eliminate what you don't. These clear delineations may sound like common sense, but the vast majority of people spend big money on things that don't really matter to them. Narrow the field. Spend big on what you love spend nothing on what you don't. This is only the first step, though. Maybe you literally can't afford to cut anything out of your life. Maybe you need to pay off those student loans before you can spend a dime on anything fun. It's okay. We'll tackle those next. Let's take a break for now. When we return, we'll continue our exploration into Ramit Sethi's I Will Teach You To Be Rich will learn the importance of being aggressive with your finances and go into the scary stuff, investing. Enjoying this episode of Book Insights? If so, keep listening and learning. There's a collection of over 100 titles you can read or listen to now at memodapp.com slash insights. That's M-E-M-O-D-A-P-P dot com slash insights. We're continuing our deep dive into finance guru Ramit Sethi's bestseller, I Will Teach You To Be Rich. Last time, we learned about the 85% solution. In this part, we'll learn about playing offense. Then, we'll jump into the deep end of investing. Ramit Sethi takes a lot of pride in his Indian heritage. Not specifically the clothing or food, but rather the Indian tenacity and savvy when it comes to negotiation. He recounts the story of his father, Prabh, who once spent five days straight bargaining for a car. In the middle of one negotiation session, Prabh stopped right before signing the papers to ask for free floor mats. When they refused, Prabh walked away, taking the astonished little Ramit with him. Ramit Sethi isn't recommending you necessarily do this, you probably shouldn't just get up and leave the room every time you're told no. But his message is clear. 
In business and money, there's no room for passivity. You go on the offense every single time because you'd better believe that the banks and businesses are trying to squeeze every penny out of you. Do the math and do your homework. Here is Sati speaking at a Talks at Google event. I can sit around and talk about financial literacy and exactly zero people will care. Or I can talk about living a rich life, automating your money so you can get on with your life because no one wants to be a money expert or a negotiation expert. And in, in my experience with my testing, um, that is likely to really generate behavioral change. Be aggressive in picking your bank. Be aggressive in paying off your debts. Be aggressive in mining every last perk out of your credit cards. The only place you don't want to be too aggressive is in your investments. But we'll get to that later. The first three weeks of SATI's program are about clearing the runway so you can take off. You begin with the admittedly grueling task of taking inventory of your credit. After all, you can't pay off your debt until you know exactly how much it is. The same goes for improving your credit score. You can do this and uncover your credit history easily and for free online, though you may want to pay for a more accurate report. Next, you find a method that suits you for paying off your debt and student loans. Some people like to pay the minimums on all their cards and loans until it slowly goes away. Some people like to pay off the debt with the lowest balance first, so they can systematically eliminate each card one at a time. Bottom line, says Satie, don't spend more than five minutes deciding. Just pick one method and do it. The goal is not to optimize your payoff method, but to get started paying off your debt. It's psychological. Once again, getting started is more important than being an expert. Be aggressive, not passive, in taking on these debts. They will not go away until you pay them off. And the time to start is now. The next stage of SATI's plan involves optimizing both your credit cards and your bank accounts. For SATI, credit cards are simple. Pay off your credit card regularly and hunt down your card's secret perks. The credit card companies will not cough up your perks easily, so you must seek them out. No one will do your research for you. With every purchase, you could be earning cash back, bonus points, airline miles, free hotel nights, and any number of hidden benefits that come with the card you specifically chose. Doing a little hard work now will pay off in massive dividends down the line. Your credit cards serve you, not the other way around. The same goes for your bank. Sadie is adamant. If you are still with Wells Fargo or Bank of America, after the repeated scandals and widespread dishonesty, what is wrong with you? Changing banks is annoying, sure, but not as annoying as being charged endless overdraft fees or having false accounts opened under your name. So, how do you choose a new bank? Start with looking at past behavior. The best banks simply offer better service and no fees while many other offer ever-increasing fees and products you don't need. In short, they are coming up with even more ingenious ways to screw you out of your money. When Sadie says, be aggressive, he ultimately means, don't be a victim. Don't cheat yourself by passively accepting a bad deal. Don't sign up with the extortionist because you think you have to. Get your house in order. Clear your runway. Protect yourself. Arm yourself with knowledge and take advantage of every benefit you can wrangle. When the big money starts hating you as much as they hate Sadie, you'll know you're on the right track. Sadie doesn't blame you for being financially illiterate. Well, not that much anyway. People tend to pass down perspectives on money to their children in invisible money scripts. As our parents taught us, so we teach our children to spend carelessly, pray for the lottery, and think investing is only for rich people. And so, we don't save, and we don't invest, and we don't get rich. Who's keeping the key to the promised land away from us? Guess who? Sadie explains that information alone is not enough. You've probably already heard about compound interest and have a sense, however vague, about how it functions. For Sadie, 
The real problem and the solution is you. That's a key point. Accepting that you are the problem might sound discouraging and, frankly, kind of a bummer. But you have to remember the positive flip side. If you're the problem, then you are also the solution. Sadie goes on to explain, Your psychology, your emotions, your invisible scripts impact how you view money. Essentially, without understanding why you behave the way you do with money and deciding why you want to change, any information is just meaningless drivel. Getting rich isn't about cutting back on lattes. It's not about pinching pennies and it's not about gambling on individual stocks. It's about learning how to make your money work for you. Best-selling author of The Automatic Millionaire, David Bach, popularized the concept of automating your money. Sadie backs Bach's claim. Saving and investing shouldn't be an active activity. It should happen automatically, so your money keeps snowballing even while you sleep. Here's how it works. First, hopefully you'll have optimized your credit cards, made a sizable dent in your debt, and opened the right bank accounts. Next thing you do is call up your human resources manager and ask if you have a 401k and if they match. If you do, and they do, lucky you. Get on this immediately. This means that up to a certain percentage, whatever amount of money you put into your retirement account, your 401k, the company will contribute the same amount of money. This is free pre-tax money. If you automate it so that your 10% contribution to your 401k automatically goes in, again, pre-tax, you'll never even miss the money. You're automatically saving. If you don't have a 401k or similar retirement scheme, never fear. It's a simple matter of going to your SATI approved bank and opening a Roth IRA, an account very similar to a 401k, though it uses post-tax money. The benefit to this, though, is upon your withdrawal at retirement age, you aren't taxed for it, unlike your 401k. Likewise, if you don't live in the States, wherever you are living, there's almost guaranteed to be a similar tax-effective pension scheme available to you. Just ask your bank or HR team. Automate these transfers. In fact, Sadie recommends you automate all your bill payments and savings and investment deposits. If all the money necessary for your investments and bills are paid automatically the first week of the month, the rest of your money is yours to do with as you please. Simple as that. When it comes to investing itself, Sadie breaks it down very simply. Investing is not sexy. It's not buying and selling for big money and bragging rights. It's not buying up piles of real estate or speculating on Bitcoin. It's not about picking hot stocks or hiring the biggest and baddest financial expert to rake it in for you. With extremely few exceptions, there's virtually no chance a human investor will reliably outperform the market. You're welcome to play the game, but play it smart, play it long term, and trust the market. After all, the stock market historically has an average annual return of 8%. Long-term investing works. Here is Sadie once again at Talks at Google. So they're like, oh, I'm going to invest in like aggressive funds and active management. They think they can beat the market. I'm like, you can't. It doesn't matter how good you are at your job. It doesn't how, matter how complicated your systems that you've built at work are. It's simple, like low-cost investing, the stuff I talk about in my book. Automate it. Move on with your life. If you do like the blood sport of personal finance, you can buy into individual stocks and even specific low-cost index funds and allocate assets like a boss. For everyone else just getting started, there's a better choice. You can bypass the bewildering world of mutual funds and call options by simply investing in target date funds. These are actually funds of funds or bundles of funds that give you automatic diversification across all asset classes, including stocks and bonds. As a smart 85% solution investor, you select a target date depending on your age and when you want to retire. Perhaps you want target retirement 2040 or target retirement 2050. 
your fund will automatically diversify your investments for you based on the market fluctuations and your timetable. The younger you are and the further away your retirement, the greater your ability to ride out stock market ups and downs and invest for the long term, given that stocks tend to outperform bonds over a long period. Or if you're only 10 or 20 years out from retirement, you might want to choose a target date fund with very low risk, with a greater degree of investment in safe bonds compared to stocks. Limited risk, a diversified portfolio, and a reliable plan. Easy as pie. Buy a target date fund, automate monthly contributions to it, and carry on with your life. You'll likely purchase one through your bank and your Roth IRA. Make absolutely sure this money in your Roth IRA is invested in a target date fund. Your Roth IRA is technically just another bank account. It won't snowball money unless the money is invested. Now your money is working for you. You're on your way to retiring with a healthy six figures in the bank. You can start breathing a little easier. Now that you're on surer footing, maybe it's time to start asking the deeper question. Why do you want to be rich? And what does being rich mean to you? Let's take one final break. When we return, we'll conclude our book insight on Ramit Sethi's I Will Teach You To Be Rich. We'll discover what it means to have a rich life. We'll review everything we learned and look at the wider implications of Sadie's book. Enjoying this episode of Book Insights? If so, keep listening and learning. There's a collection of over 100 titles you can read or listen to now at memodeapp.com slash insights. That's M-E-M-O-D-A-P-P dot com slash insights. We're concluding our exploration into entrepreneur and finance educator Ramit Sethi's I Will Teach You To Be Rich. Last time, we got into the nitty-gritty of investing and learned how and where to be aggressive. In this part, we'll discuss what it means to have a rich life. We'll briefly recap our lessons, then consider the legacy of Sadie's book, including any potential criticisms. Being rich and living a rich life are very different things. No two people will have the same quantification for either. For some people, leading a rich life is making a $75,000 salary with their own home and annual vacations with the family. For others, it's sleeping until noon every day and never working again. Many rich people are unhappy no matter what dollar amount they have or how much time they spend accumulating money in a spreadsheet. Your rich life is dependent on what makes you happy, not on keeping up appearances. Sadie urges you to get as specific as possible for your rich life goals. If you want to get rich so you can buy takeout sushi for every meal for the rest of your life, go for it. If you want to get rich so your parents can retire early, Hold on to that goal and don't let go. Being rich is what you make of it. It's another parallel with Marie Kondo. There's no point decluttering your home unless you know why you want it to be decluttered. What does your dream kitchen look and feel like? And most importantly, why is that your dream kitchen? Maybe you've always wanted to be able to host dinners to feel more connected with your family and friends. Here is Satie himself speaking on the Mad Scientist podcast. So that's what I want people to do is to live their rich life. Once you are able to do that, you might discover that certain things you thought were really appealing to you actually are not. In my life, I make my coffee most days. Uh, my wife and I hardly ever eat out, maybe once every month, every four to six weeks we eat out. And we live in New York City. If your rich life is your goal, the path to it is through big wins. Sadie describes these big wins as the five to 10 things that get you disproportionate results, including automating your savings and investing, finding a job you love, and negotiating your salary. Get the big wins right, and you can order as many lattes as you want. Use these big wins to maintain your rich life as well, but it's very important to not live in the spreadsheet. 
Sadie understands the potentially all-consuming quality of investing. Though it may seem hard to picture a future where you're more than financially secure, following these steps will all but guarantee it. But when you get there, it becomes easy to fall into the trap of staring at your finances like a watched pot. Continually moving around your assets and rebalancing your accounts in order to facilitate the tiniest of gains in your nest egg becomes very engrossing, even addictive. Don't do this. Your money should always be working towards a goal beyond making money. If there's no goal beyond collecting riches, ask yourself what you really wanted from the very beginning. Did you dream of sailing in the Caribbean or painting flowers in the south of France? Put down the spreadsheet. Let your money work while you do what makes you happy. The purpose of a rich life is that you get to live it. Before we conclude, let's take a recap. First, we discussed Ramit Sethi's 85% solution. Getting serious about money is incredibly daunting, especially if you've had financial blinders on your whole life. You may feel like the only way to get ahead is to get a degree in economics, but that's not necessary. Using the 85% solution means you just get started on investing and correcting your finances. You don't need to be an expert to get moving. Just starting will put you head and shoulders above everyone else wallowing in debt. Second, we learn to be aggressive. Know your debt, know your credit score and history, and start hitting the debt hard. Research your banks and research your credit cards to find the best possible financial benefits you can. Dispute needless charges and refuse to pay fees. The best defense is a good offense. Don't be a victim and let the big banks and experts cheat you out of your hard-earned money. You're in it to win it. Third, we dove into the seemingly impenetrable world of investing. You set up your 401k or Roth IRA or other and opened a target date fund. You learned to invest long term rather than play the fast, loose, and glamorous game of buying and selling stocks and bonds. It's better to be rich and cautious. Finally, we learned about living your rich life. Sadie teaches us that being rich isn't in a specific dollar amount. It's in attaining the financial independence to do whatever it is you want to do. It could be taking a taxi to work every day, or buying a sports car, or just having a full fridge in a house you own. What you don't want to do is get lost in your big wins and forget the purpose of your rich life. Beyond the scorn he's earned from Bank of America, Wells Fargo, and the wealthy financial firms, Ramit Sethi has received criticism from everyday folks. He's notoriously and unapologetically brusque, occasionally turning former fans into detractors by posting their innocuous questions online for the sole purpose of mocking them. His company, also called I Will Teach You To Be Rich, has a subpar score on Glassdoor.com with former employees citing low compensation, long hours, and poor management. Other financial bloggers have criticized his approach for being too simplistic. Sethi is also, it seems, exclusively concerned with younger adults, not those already past it whose mistakes are written stone. Sethi, always the happy iconoclast, has shrugged away all of these criticisms. When he began profiting off his successful blog, he just waved off the howls of betrayal. He claims to have never been interested in selling his ideas. The majority of his wealth comes from investments. Sadie quite genuinely is most interested in educating and empowering people and socking it to the big money machine. The book is filled with testimonials from happy followers who have immeasurably improved their lives thanks to Sadie's advice. He continues to teach online courses and workshops and gain rave reviews from clients. For many, Sadie's lessons are the buoy that keeps them from drowning in debt and misery, and he's happy to help. It's easy and obvious to blame everyone else for financial wrecks we put ourselves into. To this, Sadie quotes self-development legend Jim Rohn. Don't wish it were easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. 
Sadie can teach you to be rich, but the power lies in you. Thank you for listening to Book Insights. Check out the rest of our content at memodap.com. Please keep in mind that the information provided in or through our Book Insights episodes is for educational and informational purposes only. It's not intended to be a substitute for advice given by qualified professionals and should not be relied upon to disregard or delay seeking professional advice. Thank you.